Hello and welcome back. In today's video, let's create this amazing ghost effect. Pretty cool, right? So let's go. Just keep in mind that you will need to have a suitable image for this, where there is a clear subject on the photo and it would not take too much effort to remove the subject from the photo. To kick off, I'll remove the current adjustments and keep the original image layer. First thing we need to do is to remove the subject. I will duplicate the image layer by using the command J shortcut and use the inpainting tool on it. With the inpainting tool selected, I can now paint over the subject and have the inpainting algorithm do its magic. The end result is not perfect, but a good start. With the help of the patch tool, we can correct the outstanding issues. From time to time, I will switch to the clone tool and variate between the normal blend mode and the color blend mode. Once we have the idea that we are almost done, it's a good practice to compare with the original image. For example, I notice that there is a shadow being cast from the subject that also needs to be removed. Before moving on to the next step, it is also a good idea to zoom in the image and probably there are some artifacts we missed, so we can fix those too. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see a more detailed tutorial on cloning and inpainting. Excellent! Time to ghost the subject. I will duplicate the original image layer again and move this to the top. Next, I'm going to apply the Find Edges filter from the Filters menu. As this created a dark image with the edges in white, I can set its blend mode to screen. By using the screen blend mode, the black has no effect. If in your case the Find Edges created a dark background, you can invert it to get a dark background. By setting the blend mode of the edges layer to screen, we already got the effect we were looking for. I will duplicate this layer again and put the blend mode to add to make the ghost effect more prominent. These two layers will also affect the rest of the image, so we need to mask them. I can group them and apply a mask to the group. This way, I do not need to create two separate masks for each layer. As they are in a group, both of them will be masked by the mask of the group. I'm going to invert the mask and paint in the area we want to keep with a white brush. As we masked out everything, how can we easily paint back what we want, as we can't see anything? Tip here is to hide the mask, but keep it selected. Even though the mask is not applied, everything we paint will be painted on the mask layer as this is still selected. Let me enable the mask and then do a quick cleanup. As you notice, the mask doesn't have to be pixel perfect for this effect. Beautiful! To give the ghost effect a bit more glow, I'm going to draw a line following the outline of the subject. Once I have my outline, I will give the path a thick stroke and set its color. If we now add a Gaussian blur filter to it and crank it all the way up, we get this nice glow. To make it blend more correctly, we will also need to set its blend mode to screen. Because I used a path, I can easily change the stroke color to give the glow a different color. Let me also share a quick tip with you. When you're working with a Gaussian blur filter, the slider stops at 100 pixels. But we can drag the mouse while pressed on the image and this will quickly allow you to go beyond the 100 pixels value instead of entering a value. One last thing we can do is to add a curves adjustment to bring more contrast to the image 
and make it more dramatic. This looks pretty awesome. If you want more details from your subject in the ghost effect, we can just add a copy of the image to the mask group. To blend it in, I will set the blend mode of this layer to multiply and change the blend range so that only a small portion of the darker areas are shown, which gives that extra body in the subject. And as the final suggestion, we can apply a recolor adjustment if you want to change the color of the ghost effect. After you have chosen the color you want, just make sure to change the blend range of it so it would only apply to the darker parts of the underlying layers. Pretty awesome! I hope you like this technique and thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Keep safe and keep being creative. Until the next video.